this one, um, I was a little bit caught between a couple of diagnoses. The it doesn't it doesn't mature terribly well uh, as we go from the basal basilar layer um, superior sure. in the epidermis, um, and the cells are and the cells are large, um, but there's no at least there's not like obvious parakeratosis. Like I can see a tiny little focus of it there. It's just such poor maturation. Um, but um, you know, so Bowen's obviously being the other other one, the differential. Yeah, right. This is a really hard case. And the pigment, of course, the distractor, those are all just pigment keratinocytes, as you recognize, not nothing to do with molyanocytic. To me, I would look at this and think this is probably a really subtle Bowen's disease squamous cell carcinoma in situ because I've seen ones like this that had obvious areas of malignancy and other areas that were very subtle. In the study set, this is called large cell acanthoma with Bowen's disease, which I think is totally fair and reasonable. Um, there's look a high level atypical mitosis. There's a mite here. Um, sometimes squames and sometimes even actinic keratosis does not have para, even though we teach that they usually do, not always here. These areas look more atypical. So I think that's why this was called large cell acanthoma plus Bowen's disease. And I think that's a totally reasonable thing. These are ones sometimes we're doing the immunostains will actually help if you need. But here, look at that. Atypical might look like a stick figure. It's like a guy on skis or something. I don't know. And it's way up here. So yeah, I would call this squam in situ personally. I think it's totally reasonable to think it may be arising in a large cell acanthoma, which if you're watching this and don't know what that is, I basically think of large cell acanthoma as either solar lentigo or flat seborrheic keratosis with large keratinocytes. That's the way I conceptually think of it.